Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Crafty Concepts with Erin. Today I have a scrapbook layout for you featuring the new Cosette collection from Close to My Heart. I really like this because it has kind of that junk journal vibe, like collage style, a little Parisian, you know, flair going on. I think it's so pretty. So all of the papers are double-sided. I already have them flipped over so you can see all of the patterns. And then this is really cool. I think I'm going to be fussy cutting some of these out to use as in embellishments. There is a coordinating sticker sheet as well that has great little title options together and then good times. I love the vintage typewriter. I think that is just really cool. And then just the floral accents or some border stickers and then journaling spots, little bird there. Um, I think it's really, really pretty. So that's the sticker sheet. And then we have this pattern paper. And then on the opposite side is this one. So you can see it does say Versailles and Paris. There's the Eiffel Tower on there. I'm actually going to be scrapbooking some Venice photos because it still has that old world feel. I'll just kind of camouflage. If I use this one, I'll camouflage the ones that are specific to Paris. Not that it matters, but you know, I just don't want it to be confusing. I want it to be very obvious we're in Venice. This is the second uh, set of papers here. Love the pine with that pattern on there. Pine is one of my favorite colors. I love greens. So on the opposite side, we have this mulberry with the stripe. And then we have this set of pattern papers. This is the mist background or the color in the background is mist with white little floral leaves. And I love the distress can you see that? I don't know if it's picking up on camera, but there is distressing already created into this pattern paper. And then we have the wildflowers on the opposite side and the background is vanilla. So it's not white daisy that I typically use. It has this vanilla, which is kind of an off-white. Along with all of the pattern papers, I do have the workshop. You can get just the paper and sticker sheet or you can get a workshop option. And I love all the bonus papers and die cuts in the workshop option. So you can create these pre-designed layouts and everything you need to create these layouts is in this one bundle, which makes it really nice. They even give you the cutting guides and tell you exactly how to create these. So anybody can do it regardless of your level of scrapbooking, but I love these uh, bonus pattern papers. This one looks like a paper bag. And then we have more of the mulberry with that distressing. You get two of those and then you get lots of cardstock to create those layouts. And then I'm not going to pop these out yet because I want to, I don't want to lose them, but all of these tags and different um, things to create with. It's like just a bunch of ephemera, which I love. So all these bits and pieces will go to create those layouts, or you can do your own thing, which is what I'm going to do today. I have a coordinating stamp set and the pocket cards as well, but I'll bring those in when we are going to use them on the layout. I know this is an incredibly touristy thing to do, but we were tourists in Venice, so you gotta do the gondola ride, right? So there's lots of photos from this adventure, but these two are my favorite. So I'm creating the kind of title page, and then I will have companion pages following up with our experience in Venice. And I'll be probably using like the Pocket Plus where you have like the little inserts where they're divided. But these two kind of just really spoke to me. And this one, we're just going into the canal, and. It, it, it was so peaceful. There was no one else around and we had the place to ourselves. It was just an incredible experience. And if you look at the water, it matches this paper so well. And then, I mean, look at that. Like it was just, the tones are perfect. And there's pinks and corals in this stonework that will play well into the colors in this paper pack. And I know it's hard to appreciate, but the archways and the lighting fixtures, it just... It was so cool. Really, really a beautiful, you know, like I said, it's very touristy, but you got to do it. And I'm so glad we did. This is my youngest son, Clayton. He bought this hat while we were in Venice. So I, you know, this is kind of two in one. We're documenting the gondola ride. And also I'm going to tell the story of his little uh, straw fedora type hat here. That's my friend's son. And these are, this one's a three by four. This one is a little bit smaller than a four by six. It's four inches wide by about five and a quarter. That does include the white border. 
So what I'm thinking, when you have a busier pattern paper like this one, I like to use just like kind of a strip of it to, or we can fussy cut this. So I'm not sure if I wanna use this side or this side. In Venice, there are boxes hanging from every window, flowers everywhere. So to me, all of the you know, florals kind of play into that really well. So let me, let's see. I Again, I wanna kind of cover up anything that specifically says Paris. So I might just cut a strip from the other side. What I'm thinking is I'm gonna have, here I already cut the branding strip off of this one. We'll just turn it upside down for now to get the the feel before we cut up the paper. So I'm kind of thinking if I have a two inch strip and then that's why I like working on my Versamat too. I can easily see exactly where I need to cut my paper. And then I'm kind of thinking of the photos like this and then I'm gonna create a title down here and then have some embellishments anchoring the title and then one up here as well. I have lots of goodies to work with. I've got the Cosette scrapbooking stamp with some really classic timeless images or story options on here. And then I might use some of these stamps like the clock and the postage stamp. I really like those. I also have the pocket cards. These are gonna be great for layering. So while I appreciate how the green really matches the green in the photo, I don't want that to get lost. So I want some separation and I wanna do some matting and I'll probably be bringing in these pocket cards. Like that one's gorgeous. This is my favorite pocket card in the, in the whole bunch. So there's four by six and then there are the three by fours. So those are really great for just kind of tucking. And I really wanna capture that kind of collage junk journal look. I also have these paperboard die cuts. I know they don't look like much in the sheet here, but when you punch them out, they are awesome. So I actually have two sheets. I already popped this little butterfly out of there, but there's frames. You can see it from the back. Postage frames, brackets, butterflies, some florals, and, and just kind of, you know, um, leaves and whatnot, hearts, arrows, and then just some banners, all with this really cool newsprint so I think that these are awesome so I definitely want to bring those in as well. Now I could just cut down this pine green pattern paper here but I don't want to waste any of that so we're going to trim off two inches to give us a 10 by 12 piece and then that way I still have a 2 by 12 inch piece I can use on something else. So we'll line that up, just give it a trim and then I don't want to hide this paper so I'm going to give myself a little bit extra, maybe two, hmm, let's go two and a half. That way I have room to adhere the you know layers together. And if you use your Versamat and line these up and when you adhere them it will be exactly 12 by 12. You could also mat this on like a plain piece of white cardstock, but that just adds unnecessary bulk to your photo albums. Now, I think I want to add a little strip of toffee in between here. So I'm going to tear this just to give it more of that kind of rustic aged feel. And I want the white core to show, so I'm going to tear this piece of paper towards me. And just a little bit of this is going to be peeking out. So I'm taking my time to tear it very straight. So we have a nice torn edge here all the way from the top to the bottom. Then we can just slide that back underneath. I'm actually going to adhere that pattern paper to the verse mat so it doesn't move around on me. Another thing you can do to add to that distressed feel is rough up the edge. This is an edge distresser. If you don't have one of these, this one's retired, it's no longer available. You can use an old pair of scissors and just carefully rough up the edge. And I, I like this look as well. So you could either tear it or use the edge distresser. Now I want to further age this paper. So I'm bringing in my all-purpose mat. Anytime I'm doing inking, I like to use my all-purpose mat just to protect my work surface and it's easy cleanup, which is always nice. The toffee color is not only featured in this paper pack, but it's great for giving that vintage look. I have a blending brush and I'm just doing a light coating on the outside edge of the paper to make it look aged. I didn't catch it on camera, but I did adhere this with removable glue dots. That way I can just run some tape runner on the very inside strip, and then I'll layer my little torn piece of toffee using the measurements on my verse mat to line that up top and bottom. 
and then I could adhere my green pattern paper to the toffee piece. And again, I'm just lining that up with the corner of my verse mat so I know I have a true 12 by 12 paper here. Now I can bring back in my photos and we'll start the fun process of embellishing. I do want to mat that main focal photo and I'm thinking this mulberry color to bring out the tones in the old buildings, but there's no sense in using the pattern paper. I'll just use cardstock because you're not going to see enough of the pattern anyway. Now I'm going to put this one back here and then let's check out the pocket cards and see what we can use to layer and kind of create a little collage of pattern papers here. I know I want to use this one. I just love it. And the pocket cards are nice because they're landscape on one side and portrait on the other. Mm, I think that looks kind of cool. Let's go with that one. I'm just gonna bring in my all-purpose mat over here. That way I can kind of leave it out because I'm gonna be doing a lot of distressing to these different papers. So I'm gonna repeat the process on this pocket card here, just giving a little bit of subtle color to the outside. And then I think it's gonna look cool if I tear it just to add that aged feel. So I'm literally just gonna tear this, kind of rough up the corner, tear it, Make sure there's nothing on the other side that you might not want peeking through. And then you can kind of just use your fingernail to rough that up and roll the edges in a little bit. And it just adds a little character. These tiny little details like tearing the paper have a big impact on the overall design. There are some great title options on this sheet. Good times would work, together would work, but I really wanted to customize it and have my title say floating in Venice. So I created this in Cricut Design Space. I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. This is Autumn in November. The font is called Autumn in November, the scripty part. Jema turned all of us onto this. All of us on the creative design team have been using this font because it's so pretty and it's free. So you just head over to defont.com, download that to your system and then you can use it in Cricut Design Space. So this is a pretty intricate font rather than cutting it out on my Cricut and gluing it I opted to use the print and cut feature. I'm going to show you exactly how I designed and created this title so stay tuned for that but you'll notice that you can really customize it. So I already had this layout and then I went over to Design Space and you know plugged it in to see what size I I wanted to make my title and you'll notice I designed it to perfectly fit this space. So it's kind of anchoring my photos here and then I could have had it in one straight line but I wanted to capture the drop in the photos and uh, work like that. So we're over in Cricut Design Space and you can see I created kind of a rough sketch of what my page looks like. I have my photos according to size and now I'm just going to click text and then we're going to type floating and I'm going to change this up on the top here. We're gonna go over to font and then I'm gonna click system and then start to type in autumn and it'll pop right up. It's autumn in November, there it is. And now we need to click a second text box. So it's already in that font, which makes it handy. And this one is going to say Venice. So we'll just spell that out. I kind of want them roughly the same size here. So we're just gonna kind of place it maybe like that for now. Now I want the word in to be in a more block type font. So we'll go back over, click text again, and we'll change this to say in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go back up to the font. We're gonna clear out our search and then mm, this one looks good here. That is a font called Avenir. It just was already in my computer system. So what we're gonna do, I'm actually gonna grab all of these so I can move them. Uh, oops, let me highlight them all. Then we'll move them over into place so we can get a better visual. I know it's hard to see on the background, so I will actually change the color. Let's go toffee here. And we'll just, that way you can see, I'm going to print them out in black with a white offset, but for now we'll just use this so you can see them against the different backgrounds. So I can already tell you the word floating is too big, so I'm gonna shrink that down. And then I can just kind of use this space here to get everything situated. I want them all close enough to where the offset tool is gonna catch everything at once. 
So that looks pretty good. I'm highlighting all three. I'm actually gonna group those together just to keep them nestled together. And now we're gonna go up to the offset tool. Click offset and you can slide this little you know, bubble here to either decrease or increase the size of the border around your title. So I'm just kind of eyeballing that. I know it's hard to appreciate on camera. Sometimes it's easier just to type in the numbers and you can click apply and it's going to put that in black. I want it white, so we're actually using vanilla here. And then I can um, see what that's going to look like. I can go ahead and put that back to black now so you can see that. And I feel like it's still a little bit too big for what I'm wanting, so I'm going to just shrink it down. It's all grouped together as one, so you can shrink it or make it larger and just play around with it until it looks nice and balanced to you. I feel like that looks pretty good. I still have my title highlighted here or selected. I'm gonna go up to the top where it says basic cut. I'm switching that to print and cut. I'm actually gonna move it over here and then I'm going to click flatten in the lower right hand corner. And that's going to let my you know system know that I'm not cutting any of those layers. They are all going to be one layer. So I'm going to get rid of my layout background here because I don't need that. That was just a visual reference. I'm just going to hide everything in case I wanna bring that back. And then we can click make it. It's going to print out with this black border around it and that is what the Cricut is going to use to cut that out. So don't worry about that. And I'm printing it on vanilla cardstock. You just wanna hit uh, send to printer. And then this is going to pop up. Click on the system dialog. That is going to allow you to make changes for your personal printer. And then I like to hit the add bleed because that gives you a little bit of a buffer. So when I send it to my printer, it is actually behind the Cricut uh, screen, so I have to move that. But you can change the media quality. I like to use photo matte paper for my cardstock. And then you can change the quality and the size of the paper, et cetera. And then you just click print. Once that prints, you run it through your Cricut and cut it out. And then you have a title custom for your layout. So I'm gonna pull in some of these fun paperboard shapes here. I do wanna darken that. It's not showing up against that kind of vanilla colored pocket card. So let's change this to toffee. You can get really creative with this newsprint uh, paperboard set of die cuts. You can ink these up and make them any color you want. You can leave them this kind of off-white vanilla color. You can give them like the distressed look with the toffee ink, or you could make them any color. I definitely like the contrast of that color against a lighter pocket card. So I think I'm gonna, man, eh, the butterfly needs something behind it. There's this sticker here that's in the mulberry color. I'm going to remove the adhesive off the back so I can move this around just in case I don't wanna end up using it. You can also pat that on the back of your hand to remove some of the adhesive as well. So I'm thinking if we slide that there and then put the butterfly, I do like that, but there's a smaller butterfly. I think I'm gonna use that one. So let me just add a little bit of inking to the edges of my butterfly for consistency and we'll get him situated on there. Perfect, I like it. I want to use the coordinating stamp set. There is a clock face in here I absolutely love. So I'm going to ink that up in black ink and we'll stamp it on that piece of toffee cardstock. I'm actually going to use archival black. That is my go-to for my scrapbooks. And then we'll just give this a second to soak in. And then there's the little hands for the clock face as well. So I thought it'd be fun to actually kind of put the time for our gondola tour, which was eight o'clock in the evening. We were kind of slacking that day and we didn't realize it'd book up so fast. So we got one late in the day, but honestly, I'm glad because it was so peaceful and the sun had already was kind of going down. It was just really, really neat. I'll go ahead and die cut that out with one of my circle dies, and then we can use this on the page here. You know what, I don't want my title by itself. I need some more uh, bits and pieces down here with the title, so I think that looks good. I really wanna add some of these fun images from the pattern paper, and I can grab this envelope and this little sentiment. It says, love this life. I can get these right off the corner without really destroying the rest of that paper. 
So let me cut these out really quick and use them separately. If you have a great pair of scissors, like these microtip scissors, fussy cutting is much simpler. Let me just trim off the excess here from this little envelope. If you cut that whole sheet up, you would have a whole lot of ephemera to create with. And I love that, that makes me happy. They're just perfect for nestling and layering and creating those interesting embellishment clusters. So I think I actually wanna put that behind the clock and then this one maybe up here. It needs a little something behind it. From the extra bonus die cuts from the workshop, there's this little tab. So I'm gonna try that up top just to create another little layer. And I do like the way that looks. Now this little envelope has that same kind of corally color that the flowers do in the pocket card. So I just wanted to add I know it's subtle, it's a very small pop of that color, but I wanted to repeat it down below. I have these black acrylic shapes and I've been wanting to use brackets. I noticed Janice did her layout share and she used a bracket and I thought it looked so good. So she gave me the idea to pull mine out and then maybe some hearts too. I wanna repeat the little black acrylic a couple other places on the layout here. I do appreciate that these acrylic accessories are nice and thin so they don't put too much bulk on your layout. And then I recommend using the micro glue dots to adhere these down. They're super quick and easy and no mess and they hold strong. Sometimes I have a hard time using these brackets. Like I feel like they have to be around a title or journaling, but no, they can just kind of be part of the embellishment cluster on their own. You may have seen this. I created a little YouTube short for this garden journal entry, but I wanted to show you because it's the same Cosette collection. I created the little ticket ephemera with a strip of vanilla cardstock and the Parisian notes background stamp. And then I fussy cut the butterfly from a pocket card. And then this layer, this one, and I'll pull that out so you can see it. This one and this one are all pocket cards or picture my life cards from the Cosette collection. So I just used a double-sided tape and adhered the outside to create a pocket for my journaling. I did a little background stamping. This splatter is stamped with the um, background elements or that may be perfectly imperfect patterns actually. So super quick and easy, but I'll leave this uh, short video linked in the description box below. And I know I'm gonna get asked about this because aren't isn't that cool? Library cards are so much fun. That is actually from the date stamp and it's just called the date stamp. You can get this with or without the thin cuts, but you want the thin cuts because that's what caught cuts out the pocket card at, or the library card and you can create a pocket as well. So I love that they come in the envelope on their own magnetic sheet too. So this has score lines to create a pocket. I mean, I used a pocket card here, but you can create the pocket. This cuts out those nice rounded corners on your library card. And then you get all of these, they don't show on the front, so there's so much more. You have all the months of the year, and then you have the days of the week. You have all the different dates of the month that you can you know, use. And then there's different phrases on here. So on mine, I stamped loved this and then the date. But you could put this weekend, this day, this night, or, um, you know, a uh, week in the, or life, week in the life or something like that. Just all sorts of different ways you can mix and match these words. There's AM, PM, next, all, week, month, year long. So different things you can mix and match. So I thought that this stamp is super cool. And I just want to share this with you in case you missed it since it's the same collection. If you enjoyed this layout, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more with this collection, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'll be sharing more layouts in the near future. Everything I use to create this layout can be found in the description box below, along with links to my social media sites where you can find still shots of all the artwork. Thank you so much for watching. If you are looking for more inspiration, then check out this video right here. I'll catch you next time. Bye.